So I've personally been coaching since 2010 and I've been extremely blessed to be able to coach a whole array of people from doing free events, trying to get this information to as many people as possible, the people who really need it, but I've also been really blessed and privileged to be able to coach a lot of really successful and really rich, more VIP clients. And this is done in a bit more of a private setting. A lot of it, I really just don't talk about it publicly because it's private, but there are some key lessons and ideas to take from this. And when I work with these clients, although at the surface, and this is what everyone thinks, right? You look up, you're like, oh, these rich people, they have it all, right? At the surface, it's like, why are they here? You know, why, why would they They're need rich. help? They're rich. But if you look behind that little facade, they tend to be even more miserable than the people who don't have that financial success. And this can be a little bit triggering. You're like, what do you mean more miserable? They don't deserve to be more yeah. miserable, right? It's like with uh, Billie Eilish, there's all this controversy. You're like, why is she sad? She's successful, she has the money, be happy. And it's really sad to see the behind the scenes, to get to know the person, because again, they really don't have the same, and this is a key concept, excuses that people who don't have that success have when they're at the bottom, right? It's like, oh, I'll be happy if I had money. When you have the money, you're like, I'm still not happy. Now your excuse is gone. Now you can't keep telling yourself, well, it's because I don't have money and it shifts to, is there something wrong with me? So the two main areas of focus is number one, on learning how to enjoy that success, on how to be fulfilled. And then the other one that I really hammer on these really successful clients is how to remove that next level, you could say that next ceiling of success. It's the like self-imposed how to, resistance that we talked about in Dallas. Exactly, right? It's like no more ceilings of success, how to blast through that and get even more results, but then more importantly, how to enjoy those results. Yeah, how could actually being happier rather than running off of cortisol and frustration as a motivator yeah. or moving away from motivation rather than moving towards happiness and motivation. And the thing is this, if you're somebody in this position, you're, you're saying, wow, this is the video for me. But guess what? Even if you're somebody not in this position at all, this video is also for you because we're teaching you here how to have success in health, wealth, relationship, higher purpose, and we want you to have that financial success. So what we wanna do, it's like you got a little tree, and we want you to start growing the tree properly so that the roots are in place so that you don't wind up, you know, just blowing over the tree. Now, we're sitting out here in Houston. It's a, it's a muggy day. I'm, I'm sweating like a pig here. It's muggy. There's these kind of bugs going. And this here is actually a perfect analogy for what a lot of time what it's like to be wealthy. Like, you know, we're sitting out here in Houston, Texas. Beautiful view, Sabine Street Bridge. Things are nice. But then there's also that kind of like that mugginess, that heaviness. It's kind of hypnotizing. And in many ways, you know, that's what it can feel like to be successful. Everybody feels like you should be happy, but you're being dragged down. Now, you've heard that old uh, Notorious B.I.G. song where he says, Mo money, mo problems. That's my Owen name. Like, I'm like, the mo, mo money, mo problems. And so, mo money, mo problems. What it means is every high is super high if you have all these resources, but every low can be super low. So having money can allow you to do things like maybe buy the best organic food to buy incredible supplements. You know, Ju and I today were taking a, a, you know, about a 50 to 100 year old ginseng supplement, a little bottle of it costs close to $1,000. That's pretty cool to do. We're drinking Gyokoru green tea with a high L theanine at Ruggles Green Health Restaurant, which is amazing. We've got amazing mentors ourselves. We get to travel, you know, into a beautiful place. We have nice cameras. We're about to go to a beautiful Austin event. We're gonna party like rock stars there. So there's a lot of good that comes from it, right? And you know, it makes like, and Julian does stuff like this for me, I do stuff like this for Julian, like, it makes me happy to crack out my snobby green tea and say, have some snobby green tea, Julian. Let's go to, let's go to like the nicest spa in town and you know, go, you know, into a Russian banya and jump in a cold plunge and freeze and somehow think that's cool. So, you know, right, so it's fun to, you know, let's go and, let's go to Glacier Park and have a bear walk by us. That's, that, now we're really living, I guess. So that's the idea, like you could do beautiful things. It's fun for me to be with my children or for Julian to be with his daughter and walk into the toy store and say, you can get what you want. We can get in the right schools. You know, if you ever have a problem, we got you. You know, that safety, that yeah. future, that prosperity, that inner abundance being aligned with outer success so that you can expand more. So that's a powerful thing to have. It's, it's a very beautiful part, but the downside is this. With success, there's many, many downsides. First of all, many of our clients, our private clients, are in a viper pit. Yeah. 
They are being viewed as a target. Anybody who they talk to can litigate against them. Anybody that they could get married to can leave them and just drag them into court for years. They can say anything, but they're not allowed to respond because if they respond, it's like they're punching down. So if they say nothing, they're a jerk. <laughs> if, they, if, they, if they say nothing, they're a jerk. And then if they respond, it's like they're being mean. You know, you can, I, I've coached people that have, that, you know, literally wind up on like the, you know, the front page and they're being told they're a jerk boss and all this stuff. And, and I know them and I'm like, you know, I, I suppose in theory that's, this is like the nicest, like these will be people that are like, hello, hi, you know, and even when it, that happens, they're like, I'm really listening. I, I don't know, what can I do better? I don't know, like so friendly and nice. And then if they say anything, they look like a jerk. They've got best friends ripping off patents, stealing from them, embezzlement. Um, one friend of mine, he had, uh, he had uh, I mean, I say he's my, he's my client and my friend, he's like a brother to me now. He had it to where, he had someone in, in the hospital that was sick and he's paying out of his pocket to get him the best possible accommodations and while he's gone, finds out this guy's embezzled endless amounts of money from him and then even has the niceness to keep paying for the hospital because he's that nice of a person. Another person, um, you know, uh, tipped off some uh, kidnappers and got him jacked for his watch and they blackmailed him and said that if they don't keep paying that they're, that they're gonna keep coming back and attacking him and his family. So the problem is you can become a target for blackmail, exploitation, lack of appreciation. You're out there trying to create jobs for all these different people. People don't appreciate you. You're trying to create prosperity. People say you're an exploiter and there's no one to speak for you. And if you say a word about it, <laughs> you say one word, you're like, this isn't fair. It's like, who are you to talk? Who are you? You know, Chris Rock, he says that uh, some people that got the most crap get to talk the least crap. And the people that get to talk the least crap, allowed to talk the most crap, right? It's like, and, and, and of course, it's a beautiful situation to be in, but you've got to realize that you're carrying a burden too. And so really what Julie and I are getting at here is this idea that money raises the stakes. The beautiful, you know, the, for every $30 ginseng pill, you have the, you know, you have, the, you have that, that team member that was your best friend that you're paying for their hospital bill and that is trying to get you kidnapped. <laughs> and you're like, why? Why? You know, my, my friend who did that, he's like, he just, you know, he hits a breaking point. He just, he takes his family down to like Cancun and he's just sitting there. And like on his Instagram, it looks like he's just having like this private villa for, uh, you know, for, you know, to get away with his family that he's in a helicopter tour. But inside he's like, what is humanity? Like, what is this world? And so what it comes down to is a number of different things. So here's one of them, okay? Here's the first tip. The first one is this, as a tip. The very first understanding is that in life, money is correlated to happiness, but it's not a direct overlap in happiness. It provides base level resources and opportunities, and really the opportunity for expansion, to have great teachers, to have the time to write poetry, whatever. But the downside of it is that while it has those ups, it's gonna have downs, and so because those are so extreme, what I believe, and again, if you're not successful, even more important to start this now, so that as you gain success, you grow the tree properly, you've gotta be tracking your, 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 your RAS, your focus, of when you're in a good mood. When you're having that great day, track it. When you are, you track what you focus on. Track how your body feels. Track how present you are. Track your perspective. If you're in a great mood, you know how it feels? It's like, I'm gonna be in a great mood forever, I'll never be in a bad mood. Like, I feel good right now. Why would I ever be mad? If you're in a great mood right now, why would I ever be mad? Let me make a prediction. Within 72 hours, you're gonna be salty about something, no matter where you are in life. And if you're really successful, some of those things are very extreme, and nobody's gonna have any empathy. And now you're stuck stewing on it, stuffing it, and grinding your teeth. So, you know, a lot of my wealthy clients, they, they have teeth grinding issues, and I've had that too. It's like tension. They go get massage, they're tense. You'd think they're relaxed. So, then what you've gotta to say to yourself is, if you write that down, Realize that it may feel like you'll never be in a bad mood, but it's just a momentary perspective, and write that down. Now, next up, when you get in a bad mood, start noticing where, what your RAS is focusing on, what your body feels like, why you're keeping in that. Write it down, and then when you get in a good mood again, look back on it. Now what's happening is you're having that kind of conscious awareness that it's just a perspective. You know, I hate to say this, but I had a cousin, he killed himself, and if I could just bring him back, I'd say, Dylan, it's my cousin Dylan, I'd say, Dylan, it's a perspective, man. Don't, don't do something that you can't undo. It's, he had so much to live for, he has a family. It, you know, we didn't see it coming. And it's a, it's a perspective. 
and that perspective is going to change. So you've got to realize that on a high, your perspective is going to change, and that's okay. But become aware of it in your body language, feelings in your body, your energy system, your RAS, your selective focus. Be aware of it. Then be aware of when you're in a negative state. And it's almost like you become like that shaman who did some, and we don't do this, but say you did some psychedelic drug. We really don't do it, but as a common example, you know, that shaman could be like, you know, 10 hits of like ayahuasca, you know, they're seeing the snake, and like they're in the vortex, but they've been there so many times that they're, you know, they're kind of riding there, right? And that's Julian's job here in the situation, or my job, is that we're that shaman. We've been there. We could even be right in the pit with you. We've been in crisis, me and Julian. We could be there with you. And it's like, it's like, here it is the cortisol, the negative waves of energy. It's like you're that pilot flying through the cloud. You know, like the turbulence, there's some And all the people on the passengers are like, ah! You know, and you're like, just roll with it, just roll. It's like we're in the turbulence now. We love this, it's part of the journey. And that's the difference. Are you that person in the back freaking out? Or are you that pilot in the front? And you know what? We don't all start off the pilot. Jewett and I, we're the passengers, would have the pot. We have mentors that help us. And then we also now help other people and bring these lessons back to you. So that's the first idea. But see, here's the challenge. This will be what Julian's going to cover. Is that we can logically understand this. And that's step one, that helps. But the downside is nothing changes till energy moves. And we know that. And so the problem is that you can consciously know this. And it's almost like you're holding down a beach ball. You're like, hold down the beach ball, hold down the beach ball. Like, like, I know that there's, this is a perspective, I know it, but you're seething in cortisol and nobody empathizes and nobody cares. And that's where that next step comes in, which is to say, if I change my energy, I will naturally gravitate back to that higher state. And that is why <laughs> we have to release. Yeah, I also really want to emphasize how important this is, even if you aren't there yet, because here's what happens. You usually tend to embark on this like, let's be successful, let's make money out of some inner wound, right? You feel this void within, you're like, oh, I don't feel too good, I don't feel too complete, let's do something. And it's a much better attitude than, ah, well, screw it then, what's the point, and just kind of ruminating at the bottom, right? So there is that initial spark within you, and that's, you know, it's great. You're very lucky to have that if that's you. But as you start embarking on this, you're like, I'm gonna be whole, more, more. Once I'll reach that point, then I'll be happy. You actually double down on the success, on the thing, on the money, and your ego becomes more and more attached to it to the point where once you are there, to actually start getting to, as you said, like ride the snake, right? Start doing that inner work. There's actually a lot more to untangle than if you just do it from the start. Okay, so Not do that keep that in mind. This. Yeah, we totally didn't fall into that trap. We do from the start. Right? Um, but it is interesting, like your ego becomes invested and one thing I've seen too with a lot of successful clients is they keep looping on the past, right? Because they don't find that same enjoyment. It's like, well, I'm here, now what? They kind of loop back to, you know, those simpler times. Like things were so much better back then. You know, I thought this would make me happy. Oh, it was better when I was making less. It was better, can, yeah. can we go back? They yeah. actually fantasize about being poor, being normal, going back, right? It's like, why did I do this? Yeah. I thought it would be, ah, oh, it's worse. You know, so if that's you, very, very common. Okay, now with, you could we should, say- We should end this video with me and you just like being like, F it, and then we just go roll around in the sludge. <laughs> we just get like a cardboard box, like cover ourselves in dirt, like, F it all. It's like, what was the point? Simpler times. Um, but do understand too, right? You you invest in the thing, in, in money, right? Um, but this is what you realize once you reach the top, so to say, is that money is simply a tool, right? It's a, it will help you with whatever goal it is that you have. So if you are embarking on this journey out of that void, out of that inner wound, and you're already kind of numbing yourself, escaping yourself, what's money going to help you do? It will yeah. allow you to do more of that, right? Instead of say, drinking really cheap liquor, right? It's like, I don't feel good, I'm gonna drink, I'm gonna numb it. Now you'll drink top shelf. Instead of distracting yourself with your PlayStation, you'll travel around the world. You'll be and, on and, a and, yacht. And we need to let you know this. We have wealthy friends of ours that are dead now. Our friend yeah. Tony Shea, who is we were blessed to always have at our summit every year, is dead now. You can look him up. He sold Zappos to Amazon for I think 800 million or whatever it was. Beautiful man. And learn from Tony. Tony is someone to be learned from uh, at every level of what he taught and his message to the world. He was beloved and is beloved to this day, but also see what he's experienced. And we have many clients like this that have been through it and it is, it, it, it is not what you think it is. And this, that's the message that we're here to share. Yeah, it's very rare to actually find someone who's both rich on the outside and on the inside. You'll see one archetype where, you know, there's a reason, say with Burning Man, everyone gets into that because like, I've made it, there must be more to it. You know, and then they yeah. try to find themselves in say Burning Man. But then there's the other side where it's like, I've made it. And they either double down on the money or they get really into say, again, 
fancy wines and liquor and they're just numbing themselves or travel or food and they again it's just really terrible like that pattern just amplifies and it's exactly what owen said right money what does it do just like fam it amplifies who you are well, you know i'll tell you this my dude who actually has been through some of those problems like the kidnapping and i actually liked that he did this by the way but he actually became a rapper and he's like, no, he's a full-on rapper. And his, his, his music is actually amazing. He could actually blow up big as a rapper. But what's been happening is now he's like being torn between like continuing his business and being a full-time rapper. So it's, it's, and then he's like sort of in a, in a perplexion point to where, do I, do now, do I, am I a rapper now? And he's ha having real success with it. Or, you know, do I keep banking mills? And so, and, and again, it's like, it, there's, there's a confusing path to be had there. And it's like, and, and being a rapper is amazing and it's a great hobby, but what can start to happen, because he, uh, he has unlimited money to make his own videos, not unlimited, but a lot. So what happens is like, it just, it's not as simple as you think. Like you think that you get the money and the problems are solved, yeah. but it, and it adds opportunities. Cause like, how cool is that? That you could now be a rapper, but at the same time, you know, it's it, it can pull you in a lot of directions. It's like more money, more problems, right? It, it provides benefits, but it, it's also layers of confusion. You've got to be very, very grounded to yeah. be able to actually experience the benefits of it and not confuse you even further. And do really take in like those things, right? Like the success, the money, so on and so forth, all the material, if that, if that makes sense, it really won't fulfill you, right? It's great to have, you know, I always joke, people are like, does money buy happiness? Yes, because you can then buy transformation. <laughs> But, but other than that, you know, yes, it does make your life more comfortable, right? Like one of the big shifts I've noticed is when you have to, you, you don't have to look, let's just say at a menu, you don't have to look to the right anymore. The price doesn't matter and you can just order whatever you want. That was like the big shift. I'm like, oh, great. Then from there, eh, you'll see people too who really make it to the top. And like I said, they'll either reflect back on those more simpler times or they double down on the material. And that's why I keep hammering home here. Yes, right? The material's important. Anyone who tells you the opposite, no. It's one foot in the physical, one foot on the inside. But I've seen a lot of clients, like there was a prince, you know, I coached up in New York, and all he could loop about was, look how much money, look at this, this, right? Or one of the founders of Facebook, rap. same thing, right? He like, also did rap. Yeah, oh yeah, he was also it's a rapper. Not uncommon. <laughs> so that might be the, the final tipping was like, you're at yeah. the top, just start <laughs> rapping. Yeah. There, there's the solution. Yeah. <laughs> that should be the end of the video. It's like, so in, in yeah. conclusion, start rapping. Yeah, he's so wealthy, he wound up getting famous rappers coming his videos. Yeah. He just make his own rap videos. But it was actually very sad. Like he was, again, great person. Um, our boy, he's our boy. Yeah, like love him, but he just couldn't talk about anything else. And in his mind, it was like, it, it had to make sense. It's like, it couldn't have all been, you know, for nothing. It had to be the physical. And he just couldn't stop talking about that. And what was even worse was the only people who he was around yes. were yes Wrong men. friends. Right, it was like wrong, wrong friends, friends, friends around for the money, friends who would just say whatever he wanted to hear. Again, yes men, because they're all kind of sucking at the teat. Um, it, was, it was really sad, you know? And there was one point too where I gave him this feedback and he looked to one of his assistant friends and he's like, you never told me that. Why didn't you tell me that? And I could just see it like, do you agree? Do you agree? And, and he was so scared to even say yes. Like you could see in his eyes, like he knew it was the truth and he even kind of trembled. And he's like, um, um, and I was like, oh geez. And, and I like and just we, changed and, his... and we don't care. We're just going to say it. Yeah. I've been we'll just... Julian's going to be Julian. Give it to I'm you. I'm going to be me. We don't care. We got stuff to do. So it is what it is. Right. And so it's interesting that, you know, we come in that environment, like, look, here's what we see. And it's often the first time they've even heard that kind of feedback yes. and beginning to bring them back to earth. Yeah, it's like that outside perspective where it's like, hey, no agenda, right? We don't need to be like, your little friends hanging out. It's like, this is what's up, mm -hmm. right? You want the truth? Here's the raw truth. It's like Timothy S. Grover, if you really look up Relentless with Michael Jordan or how he was the late, great Kobe Bryant. He's like, look, I'm gonna be me. I'm gonna be me. So that's another thing. If you're wealthy, get around people. They're just gonna be them. How many people, when, they're, when they meet winners, Yep fold yeah they become yes men mm -hmm. yes people yes yep, right? exactly and then you have to be the person that holds them accountable and it's funny i just as you said earlier i call people out on, I, I want people to call me out on my bullshit yeah. i call them out on their bullshit yep. you've done it with me before to bring it back to it's like being rich right on the outside and on the inside what you have to ask yourself here is are you really quote unquote rich or are you a bum you know, as we were joking about earlier, we were talking about this today with all these like trinkets. Are you a bum who now has a lot of money? Are you a bum on the inside, a little golem just rotting inside, like more tense than ever, yeah. more worried than ever with all these fancy little toys and trinkets trying to justify that it must have all made sense. What's because we were talking about some of our wealthy friends that are just getting involved in litigation and lawsuits. Yeah. And it's like life is so short and it's like, it's that need to preserve control. 
and you, you can begin to lose sight of what life is all about. If you're someone who's wealthy, you know my best advice if you don't do this? Go to Walmart and get a bike and take a ride around the park. Go get a tennis ball with your buddy and throw the ball and just see what it's like to chase a tennis ball. You will get more joy from that in many ways than anything you could buy. But the counter advice is if you're not successful, realize that healthcare is increasing price. Post-secondary education is increasing price. The world is changing. You wanna be able to give to your friends. So it's more, being wealthy is about that beautiful dinner with people that you love, sharing and not having to worry. It's not about control. It's not about going down this wormhole of self-deceit. It can really mess you up. So you know what we'll do? Why don't we say, we're gonna to shoot to our next little location, why don't we say this? The next thing we should talk about is the release work, which is the idea that you can understand and audit what it means to be very happy and very sad and begin to be that shaman in the journey. But it's ultimately when you learn how to release that you're not having to, to, to hold down the beach ball under the water all the time. You'll tend to gravitate back to happiness. And from there, when you're gravitating back to happiness now, you're not operating from negativity yep. and moving away from motivation. You're operating from joy, which increases creative capacity, increase that next million dollar idea. And ironically, you're not creating that self-generated resistance. And in this weird Groundhog Day wormhole, life gets easier. You make more cash. You're more ground the earth. You care more about what's really important. And life goes up and up and up and up. I want you to look. Shoot the camera up here. I want you to look at all this stimulus right here. And then as you're doing that, I want you to come back here and I want you to look right here at this little circle right here. This circle right here is a metaphor for you in your life. This has gotta be like your safe space. You're here, the mist is rolling in, but there's a core right here that is unaffected by what is out here, which can be beautiful, which can be misty. Why? Because with these increased ups and downs, as you crawl the ladder of success, what's gonna happen is more money, more problems, but also more money, more solutions and good stuff. It's gonna get higher highs, lower lows. So you've gotta have almost that spark of divinity in you that can enjoy the flaming crap show of life as Winston Churchill says, the definition of history is one damn thing after another. That's Winston Churchill, who's seen maybe worse than us, by far, you know, defeated Hitler. But you see that idea, which is that crazy life, peace. So how do we achieve that peace? Because look, Steve Jobs died at 57. Yeah, it's amazing what he did, but that doesn't have to be you. Success leaves clues. We study success. What do we see? People hit like 57, 58, they're like, you know, wait a minute. Yep. You gotta be happy too. Unless I consciously work on what's going on in here, I can't even enjoy this. Now they learn to be happy and it's like the ninth inning of the game. They're, you know, they're happy for like a year. Like, I'm finally happy <laughs> and they're dead. What a waste of opportunity there. Even though they may accomplish a lot. Maybe they become happy in the seventh inning. Not good enough. Let's get it to maybe this is the third or fourth inning. Maybe it is the seventh inning, ninth inning, whatever it is, we're here. We want to help. So June's going to go on a little walk right now. He's going to get a little stroll rolling just around the waterfall here. And he's going to talk to you about release work, which means that that conscious understanding that you have about when you're feeling good, your RAS, your body language, how you feel, you're feeling bad, that conscious understanding, you'll tend to gravitate to that more naturally because it's what you resonate with because you've taken conscious control of your energy so that you could enjoy the amazing life that you built. And I'll chill here. Yeah. Yeah, so bring your awareness to that core, right? Remember the metaphor. This is you. This is your life. Do you think it necessarily gets easier the more money you make? Not necessarily. There's a lot bigger challenges. There's less room for error, right? If you're in a little nine to five, just kind of going about your day, you make a little mistake, it's not that bad. But as we've seen with a lot of our clients, the more you rise, one little error, the consequences are huge, okay? The waterfall gets higher and higher the more successful you become. So bring your awareness to that core. This is the first thing that I tell all my successful clients. What does it feel to be you? And just take a moment to pause here and just bring your awareness to it. What's it like? Don't look out there, just bring your awareness internally. That familiar feeling, what it's like being you, you can probably trace back to your childhood, right? That idea of like, ah, what is it? Just me. Does it feel good to be you? Are you grounded? Are you relaxed? 
Bring your awareness to any tension perhaps in your body. Is there tension in your face? Right? You can relax your jaw, detach your tongue from the roof of your mouth, and just see what it's like. And here's the thing. Remember the saying, wherever you go, there you are. We think, oh, just in terms of travel, no. No matter what you change out here, right, no matter how much success you have, it's still that same core. And this is what release work and letting go really addresses. It's working on that core directly. You see, there are two games in life. There's the outward in game, and this is the one that we all embark on. And if you are successful, then great, right? That means you've really mastered the outward in. But what you soon find is that core is still the same. The true game, the shift that you want to make, and the sooner you make this shift, the better, is the inside out. That core colors everything. That core is also allows you to remain grounded, to enjoy the results that you have, because if you're not enjoying those results, if you're not enjoying the fruit of your labor, then those are not results. Then you're chasing phantoms. It's like chasing illusions. I want this, I wasn't happy. I want this, I wasn't happy. It made it worse. What are you doing? Inside out is really the true game. That's the game of masters. That's the game of true success. That's what it means to be rich on the inside and on the outside. The inside colors the outside. By releasing, here's what happens. You start enjoying your results. You let go of needing that motivation that comes from that inner wound, that wounded core, from stress, from fear, from anger, right? I'll show them. I need more money or else. I need more success or else. I need to prove everyone wrong. You shift away from that. And instead of acting from there and propelling more of that, it actually becomes a lot more effortless. You're still taking a lot of action, but it's a more effortless action. You enjoy the fruits of your labor. There's a lot less self-sabotage. Your ceilings of success start dissipating and fading away. And this is really what life is about, right? Do you want to be someone where you reach your deathbed and this is the number one regret where it's like, I wish I would have allowed myself to be happier and it's too late. And there you are lying on your deathbed with all your trinkets, all your toys, all that success. And you're like, well, this is it. Or are you someone who tapped into your own? You healed that inner wound. You learn how to release all that stuff you're stuffing down. And from that platform, you enjoyed this amazing life. You see inner happiness, that's not the end result. That's the starting point. That's the foundation. That's the launch pad to partake in this thing called life. So if you're someone who, like a lot of my clients, again, they usually realize this later on in life. It's like, oh, what have I been doing? Let's get to this. If you're not enjoying those results, if success is not what you thought it would be, right? We think not getting what we want makes us unhappy. Getting what we want can actually make us feel far worse. If that's you, if you experience a lot of stress, if Again, life gets heavier, the waterfall just gets higher and higher, and you just get swung back and forth. If it's not all you thought it would be, then it's time to dive into this. It's time to switch from that outside in to that inside out game, the game of masters, the game of true successful people, and it's time to start processing all that stuff. Time to start working on the core directly. And this is what letting go is all about. And when my clients start doing this, it's the true, true game changer. There's a link below this video. You can book a free call. If you resonate, you're ready, you hear the calling. You want to not just be uh, rich on the outside, but also rich on the inside. You don't just wanna be a bum covered in money, covered in trinkets, but someone who's truly reaping life, milking it for everything that it's worth inside and out. Then click that link below and let's get to it. Like this program is such a game changer. The way everything's structured and the material, it's been already even for me, it's just been, I'm noticing a crazy change in, in the way that my whole life's like playing out. What you put together is just incredible. There's nothing like that. I've just jumped like a million levels. It's just been a complete 180 for my experience of existing. That's awesome. <laughs> it's just been so huge in terms of so many of the things I'm finally understanding and realizing and epiphanies I'm having. What you do is a huge inspiration to me and I think it's one of the most beautiful things you can give to another human in this entire world. You're 
save my in life, man. I'm telling you, that's this is real, man. Sometimes all it takes is just one person who believes in you. Find people who are where you are in life and model them, work with them. I would not be here if I didn't have people who held me accountable. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> I just felt a click and things are changing. This program was just top notch. Seriously, like this is a masterpiece. This is, this is perfect. Everything, the way it's set up, the live calls, like all the support from the coaches is incredible. It's, it's been nuts. I just have my tears of joy. This was the best decisions I ever made. Thank you for creating something wonderful like this. This program was phenomenal. This program was, uh, was amazing. This program has definitely changed my life. I know for a fact I'm in the right place. This is exactly what I was expecting from the program. It's been uh, spectacular. I feel really lucky to, to have found you. Thank you so much, Julian. It's, uh, it's worth every dollar.